guys, what's up? It's Dr. Marcy, and I am coming to you live today on Saturday the 10th. Sorry, I didn't know what to do. Um, and today I just want to talk to you real quick about um, why intermittent fasting is important or a shortened feeding window is important. Um, and one of the biggest things that I'm going to say is because it's due to a couple of hormones in your body. One of them is called leptin. One of them is called ghrelin. And excuse me while I just take this watch off. I just got done working out and I'm like hot and everything feels like it's getting gross and sweaty. So sorry about that. Um, so the biggest reason why you want to do intermittent fasting is because these hormones, leptin and ghrelin, actually function on a 12-hour window. So at a minimum, you only want to eat for 12 hours out of the day, which means that if you start eating at 6 a.m., you need to be done eating by 6 p.m., not taking, not starting your last meal at 6 p.m. You need to be done by 6 p.m. That's because outside of that 12 hour window, those hormones have to start functioning again in order for you to process the food that you're eating and the signals to be sent to your brain that say, hey, I'm full, don't eat anything else, that kind of thing. And so if you're eating in like a 14 hour window, um, your body isn't going to know what to do with that stuff and it's just going to store it as fat. So a shortened feeding window is super important for Number one, hormones that happen in your body don't function except on a 12 hour window. So if you are someone who thinks that they cannot live without having dinner at 8 p.m., don't start eating until at least 10 a.m. Because you know, if you go to dinner at 8 p.m., your reservation is probably gonna take you a little bit longer. Um, other things to keep in mind, intermittent fasting has been proven in the research to improve insulin levels, human growth hormone levels. It helps do cellular and tissue repair. And then it also helps your genetics respond in a normal way. Because I don't know if you know this, but your genes are what you're born with, but then the environment and the food and everything that you expose them to can actually change the way those genes interact with you as a human. So if you want the best possible outcomes, then I suggest doing some intermittent fasting. Now, different people do that differently. There is the um, five and two, there's the six and one, which means basically you eat for five days or six days and you completely fast for a full 24 or 48 hours. Um, the way that I think is most beneficial for most people because it causes the least amount of cheating later on is that you do intermittent fasting where you are doing a short window of either 12 hours of eating, 10 hours of eating, or eight hours of eating, and that will prove the best outcomes for you. Um, the second reason that you wanna try intermittent fasting is because it can help you lose weight and visceral fat. So your visceral fat is the fat that is around your organs that can actually create a problem down the road with those organs and cause things like high cholesterol. Um, it causes your organs to have trouble um, processing. Hey guys, checking in on TikTok, I see you there. Um, and it also uh, changes how your body processes norepinephrine and epinephrine, which are the neurotransmitters that either tell you to be awake or asleep. So if you want to have a better sleep-wake cycle and feel more awake throughout the day, intermittent fasting is a great thing for you. Um, in a study in 2014, there was a study on intermittent fasting that can, it said that 3%, 3 to 8% over 3 to 24 weeks weight loss can occur. Um, and study participants lost 4 to 7% of their waist circumference in six weeks. So if you're considering things that you are trying to achieve, if getting a smaller waistline is important to you, you can definitely do that in six weeks with doing intermittent fasting. Um, there was a study, a randomized control uh, study in 2020 that was looking at people who followed the 16 and eight method, which means that you're only eating in that eight hour window. Um, you fast for 16 hours a day and those people who fasted uh, lost a little bit more weight than those people who ate three meals a day in a 12 hour window. So it wasn't significant. It was only a little bit. So if you're considering whether you want to do eight and 16, 
10 and 14 um, or 12 and 12, and you think you can't make it outside of that 12 hour window, do the 12 hour, it'll be fine. There'll be no significant um, difference. The third thing is that it changes your insulin resistance level. So some people develop what's called insulin resistance. So their cells, their muscles, aren't as sensitive to the body trying to shuttle insulin into the muscle to use blood sugar. Um, and what happens then is that insulin levels in the blood stay really high, but it's not usable. And so that creates type two diabetes. Um, a research study done in, uh oh, lost my stats here, sorry. Uh, in 2016, it showed that three to 6% of people over the course of eight weeks uh, fasting insulin reduced by 20 to 31%. So that's a pretty significant Hi. amount. Um, if you're thinking about doing intermittent fasting and you've had a high A1C or you've been told that you're pre-diabetic or you have type two diabetes, intermittent fasting is something that will help you along the road to becoming healthier. Um, it can also reduce oxidative stress and inflammation in the body. Oxidative stress is one of those things that can cause you to age faster. If you want to think of it in terms of um, something that you can see every day, if you've ever cut into an apple and let it sit for 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes or cut into an avocado and didn't eat all of it and the next morning you look at it and it's like brown with a little bit of black on it, that is oxidative stress. The tissue is being exposed to things that stress it out. And when you're eating in a 14 or 16 hour window, like some of us do, um, that exposes our body to more free radicals and that oxidative stress comes in and can actually age you faster. Um, and when I say intermittent fasting, if you're gonna do like the eight and 16, where you're only eating in that eight hour window or the 10 and 14, only eating in a 10 hour window or the 12 and 12. Before you eat your first meal, you can have up to 30 calories. So if you're like, I cannot drink my coffee black, I have to have a little bit of creamer in it. You can have like one teaspoon and you can have stevia. So those are things that you can do. Um, or if you really like your coffee to be a little more milk, less coffee, you can do up to one cup of unsweetened almond milk. That's 30 calories, just so you know. Uh, reason number four to do intermittent fasting is that there is some research that shows that it is beneficial for the heart. It lowers blood pressure, lowers blood triglycer triglycerides, and lowers the total LDL while also boosting your HDL. The HDL is the good cholesterol, LDL is the bad cholesterol, um, and inflammatory markers like CRP and uh, homocysteine levels go down. Homocysteine and CRP together, when they are both high, is an indication uh, that you might suffer from a heart attack so, um, or a stroke. So if you're really interested in lowering your heart risk, intermittent fasting is a great plan for you. Um, it induces various cellular repair processes. So this, um, what I mean by this is your body is better able to get rid of waste products out of each individual cell, process those out, send them to the liver or to the kidneys or to the small intestine for elimination better when it's not constantly being fed material that it needs to detox from. So intermittent fasting, particularly if you're only eating in that eight hour window, your body has a ton of time to detox, particularly if you're drinking lots of water, you get to flush all of that stuff out super fast. So that may help you in that um, case, especially, and I know most people think this is counterintuitive, but <laughs> If you were out drinking the night before and your body needs a little detox help, intermittent fasting. Um, it may help prevent cancer. Fasting has been shown to have several beneficial effects on metabolism uh, that reduce the risk of cancer. So oxidative stress can cause cancer. Um, not being able to detox can cause cancer. Your genetics can cause cancer if they're exposed to the wrong thing. So when you're thinking about ways to reduce your risk of developing any type of cancer, including skin cancer, oral cancers, um, cancers of the nose and throat, 
uh, cancers of the GI system, allowing your GI system more time to be empty and process actually helps reduce that risk for cancer. Uh, and then it's been shown to benefit your brain. Again, oxidative stress affects the brain. So if you have more stuff going in all the time that needs processing, your body has more oxidative stress. The reduced inflammation that comes with doing intermittent fasting helps lower inflammation throughout the system, which means that blood pressure stays more stable, which means that you don't have as much pressure building up in the brain, per, um, possibly. Um, with blood sugar levels being lower, uh, or more stable and insulin levels being more lower or more stable, the brain is under less stress as well because the brain on sugar is like the brain on cocaine. It literally fries the brain. So when you're thinking about trying intermittent fasting, just think about the fact that it could be good for memory. It can be good for um, focus and it can be good for your ability to feel like you are more awake. Number nine there is some research that doing a no fat intermittent fasting diet can help with Alzheimer's disease. And the reason is the no fat intermittent fasting diet actually pushes your body into ketosis naturally. So you're burning the fats that you have, but your brain also prefers to use fats because it needs fats to wrap each individual neurological cell in order to protect those cells. And so those fats get broken down and shuttled to different areas of your body that need them and use for energy. And the brain would prefer to use fats for energy than carbohydrates for energy. Um, animal studies also suggest that fasting may protect against other neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's and Huntington's disease as well. So if that is something that is a concern in your family, um, definitely consider uh, intermittent fasting. Number 10, there's a physician, and I'm going to totally blank on his name, so I apologize for that, but he proposes that intermittent fasting, and he's done a ton of research on this, may extend your lifespan, but not just extend your lifespan, extend how well you live in that lifespan. So with less inflammation, less neurodegenerative diseases, less cancer, better brain function, you can live better longer. Who doesn't want that? I mean, would you rather be 70 in a wheelchair or 70 in on your bike, right? So intermittent fasting is something that can definitely help with that. The interesting thing is about that. In all of his research, he has a group that does a traditional diet he does, has a group that has intermittent fasting where they start eating at 10 and stop eating at 6. And then he has a group that starts eating at 6 a.m. and stops eating at like 3 p.m. His group that starts eating at 6 a.m. and stops eating at 3 p.m. actually does better. They're all of their markers across the board. Insulin levels are lower. A1C is lower. CRP is lower. Uh, homocysteine is lower. Uh, LDL cholesterol goes down more significantly than with just traditional, what we think of as intermittent fasting. He postulates that intermittent fasting is done, particularly in our setting in the US, as 10 to 6 because it's more social because most people eat breakfast at home and they might eat lunch out occasionally but most of the time they're at work and as Americans we sit at our desk and eat lunch more than any other country and so our chance to engage with other people outside of our sphere happens at dinner and so the propensity to want to push our eating window to be from 10 to 6 or 12 to 8 works better for most Americans. But what if we changed that? I mean, if we really wanted to help heart health, Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's, Huntington's disease, diabetes, um, cancer, what if we flipped it? And what if we said, work doesn't start till 10, school doesn't start until 10, and 
we took breakfast as our meal out. Just something to think about. If you guys have more questions about intermittent fasting, I'm happy to help out any way I can. Also, don't forget that we are doing this um, five-day challenge, which is actually a total of seven days, and my kiddo's probably going to pop in right here and weave to you because that's typically what he does when I'm on video. <laughs> um, and again, happy to help as much as I can. And if you need anything else regarding the five-day challenge, direct message me. There are some forms for you, and there's a book. Um, that I can email over to you and I'm happy to help anyone who is interested in trying to lose five pounds in five days. I hope you guys have a great rest of your Saturday and a great Sunday.